Hey guys, uh, bald face Harry here. So yeah, um, just a little workout. Uh, if anyone's been following the channel since since I started, I've been doing these training vlogs on and off. You know, I'm big passionate into strength training, and you know, a lot of the time, you know, with with work and stuff, I just you know, a lot of my hobbies and my passions get shoved aside, and then obviously. I love going to work, you know, I'm passionate about bricklaying as well, it's just, you know, there's times in your life where you have to sort of focus on one more than the other, so, um, it's probably been like six or seven months since I did a, a training vlog, um, and I shaved my beard off as a bit of a, a bit of a fucking start, you know, maybe that was six months of me growing a beard, eight, seven, eight months, maybe seven months, and we're gonna, you know, I'm gonna change the way Oh, moderate, moderate work. You know, I was getting too, too into the YouTube, too into working, too much. You know, out of balance. So you know, when life gets a bit out of balance, you gotta ground yourself and reset. Um, for me, that's drink less beer, do more training. You know, you know, start doing my park run again. A lot of people think I can't run, but I was really passionate into running as well. Um, I've been thinking about doing a bit of body cam with. Uh, um, of park run as well because I've got the GoPro and I'll probably uh, do a couple of park runs get somewhat regular at it and then I'll I'll get the body get the body body strap out and uh, maybe do a body strap park run or something like that I've got to look on YouTube at some running running clips because I love doing this video making you know I love making videos um, the YouTube thing I just love it you know I've always I've been training. I've been filming my son training for about seven, eight year now, nine year. Um, you know that's why. That's why I look like I do. You know that is. This isn't all because of working. You know I've done. I've done put a lot of years of training in, and you don't really doing. You know bricklaying or doing any physical trade for that matter. Um, you don't need to be training very hard because you are always tr somewhat trained at work, you know, you're already always training yourself, so I, I refrain from training my arms and forearms especially, I refrain from training my forearms at all because my forearms take a lot of, a lot of stick at work, that's why you'll notice my forearms are not far off the same size as my arms because I don't train them very much anymore, I used to be obsessed with training my arms, trying to get big arms, but like today you see, like today, um, you'll see me do uh, some press-ups, that's what I've done in this video, press-ups, and I've just got my little set of, well they used to be, you know, 50 quid dumbbells are a bit more now, I've just got my Iron Pro set of 17 and a half, 20 kilo dumbbells, I think, are they 20 kilo? 17 and a half I think, I'm pretty sure they're 17 and a half kilo, uh, a pair of dumbbells, you know, and they're like, you know, you can get them from anywhere now. I know with COVID, the price has shot up of gym gym equipment, but I've had my own kit for seven or eight years. I've had I've spent more on gym equipment than I have anything else in my life, probably. Yeah, I spent some right money on gym equipment. I've got my own setup. Of you guys, have, if you what if you search back in my in my channel, I've been meaning to. Um, let's turn that down. Search back in my channel. I've been meaning to um, sort of set up my playlists up so you guys can find what I've been building. So if you ever drop on a job and you think it's Connie Bricks, I can click on a playlist that says Concrete Bricks. But I'm gonna have them separated by lifts. So I'm gonna have fourth lifts. I'm gonna have band lifts, um, band lifts or third lifts. I'm gonna have second lifts, aka your murder lift, square into joist. Um, which is is fastly be, be, fastly becoming my favourite lift. The the fourth lift and the second lift are becoming my favourite lifts now because everything's set. Your windows are set, uh, you know. And I'm going to show you next video because this is going to be a training vlog. Not a lot of guys are going to um, are going to see this because you'll not click on it. A lot of you guys, but you know the true true uh, you know subscribers of the channel, true supporters will, will click on this one. I'm going to be showing you a few ways, obviously a lot of you guys have seen Charlie Collison um, do the laser level technique, which I'll be emulating basically, just 
straight up copying that because it's the best way. It's the best way. Um, but I'll show you another way that you can make. You can make level into you know you can make basically you can pretty much get it within five mil. Nah, I'd say five mil. You can get a level within five mil within probably less than five mil. But I'll say five mil for the you know biggest intolerances. You get your plot within five mil level all the way around, which is a bit of wood. And I learnt this fucking years ago. I'll be showing you next video, it's the next Brit Lane vlog. After you see this one, you'll probably see my rock steady Brit Lane vlog. And then you'll see probably one, five days after that. I'll probably give it a few days because um, I'm just trying to get back into the swing of things at work. I got a bit out of it. I had a bit of meddling, meddling bits last week. I just want in it, you know what I mean, really. But I'm back on it, I'm back on it. I know. So what you slip for maybe a week, two weeks, you know, in the end of world, you ain't gonna fucking. Everyone ain't always gonna be running optimally. That's the thing I like to get across to the the subscribers, get the you, the viewers. There's a lot of young lads who watch the channel, a lot of middle aged lads. Um, I think them. It's done. It ain't talked about in the Brick Lane world or in the you know blue collar trade world that we work in. You know, this channel's about Brick Lane, obviously. Ain't talked about that you're not always gonna be on it, you know, you're gonna sometimes work at a fraction of the pace that you normally do because of external factors outside of work and people they just don't especially blokes, but, but guys don't talk about it, you know what I mean, I'm fucking, you know, I like to talk about things, you know, I'm open, I'm very open, I share a lot of the time, I overshare probably but, you know it's <laughs> there's no wrong with being fucking sensitive and soft and shit I'm Fucking, I used to cry at fucking loads of films years ago. Well, to be honest, I don't watch that many films, but if I did, and it's sad, I'd probably cry anyway. But, you know, you've got to be, you got to be down to earth with your emotions as, long, as well as fucking being a big fucking strong guy and build it inside, yeah, man. But, you know, but you've got to be, you've got to be aware of upstairs, you know, what's going on upstairs, and that's going to affect how you work a lot of the time. You know, that's why I'm so picky in a sense, who they all work with. That's why you see me working solo so often. Can't work with someone I don't like. Can't work with someone I don't get on with. Um, if there's a bad vibe, I, I can't. I can't chant orders at people. Like I don't like chanting orders at people. Like when I, have, you know, I, I get to the. I, why this is why I do a bit more work loading art. I do a bit more work work preparing lifts. Because I hate having to sh tell people stuff. I'd rather set it out myself and make sure they know what they're doing first. You know, it takes a lot of time for me laying. But I hate, I hate having to chant orders at people. I hate being a, I hate being a boss. I hate being a boss. But, but it's just, I work one on one because number one, I can't find anyone who'll work my hours. <laughs> number two, I can't find anyone close to quick enough. And, and number three. If you add up the maths of why a one-on-one -on -one earns the most money, you'll realise how inefficient, um, how inefficient having anything other than a two-on-one or three bricklayers on e even three bricklayers on equal splits very inefficient. Two bricklayers and a labourer is efficient if you it's the, probably the best gang if you're the same speed. It's the best gang for turning up turning through work. If you're the same speed, truly, it's the best gang. Um, but you can't find a lot of labourers that will keep up with a really fast two and one. Not many, because I know a lot of labourers can't even keep up with me. They struggle to keep up with me, and I'm not that. I'm not excruciatingly fast. I'm nowhere near as fast as there is people out there. Um, but I'm not that far off being. You know, I could burn my labourers out if I carried on. If I, you know, were working any quicker. So you can't a true two and one is the best but you know probably doing what Charlie does he's, he's, he's got a system down where he, where he has everyone being efficient but he's good at ordering people around good at managing I, I can't do it so I that's why I stick to a one and one one and one uh, it's because it's so much easier and I like I've changed the way I work with tubs as well um, to so teach, teaching Dean putting a lot of work in with Dean to help him um, because you know, end of day, he'll probably one day not work with me. 
you know, maybe in might be three years' time, might be longer. But he can go off and do what he wants then. He can do what he wants. And I don't think there's enough of that in the building trade. There's a lot of guys who don't want to teach fucking... Don't want to teach the trade because they think somehow if they teach someone, they'll take the work off of them. Dean might not want to build houses for the rest of his bricklaying career if he keeps at it and becomes a bricklayer, gets his blue card. And I said to him before, I've said this to him before, we'll probably never be on equal split. We'll never be working together on equal split because... I work like an idiot, and I don't expect him to work like I want to work. So, like I said, you know, in many years to come, three, four years, you know, he's still doing it, I'll set him up a gang, and he can run his own little gang, and I'll help him if he needs help. If I need to come over for an hour and help him, I'll help him, and he can make all his own money he wants. But I'll still keep probably one on one, or maybe one and two. I'll probably be, have one labourer, one apprentice, and me. That's the max I probably can handle. But I don't want a big fucking gang. I don't want to be a big fucking ganger. I don't want loads of the bricklayers giving me their own opinions. You know, I just don't want it. I just, it's so much, so stressful, so many arguments. Um, you know, probably every site I've gone on, I've argued with a bricklayer <laughs> over summer. Over summer, it can be trivial. But yeah, that's a big thing. Like, I'm setting Dean up in years to come to go off on his own and do what he wants not fucking belittle him and knock his confidence and say he'll never be good enough now he can go off and and get to the speed where he can build his own work and if he wants to go around as a, a solo bricklayer doing little footings doing little garages earning his own money fucking off when he wants earning seven eight hundred quid he might be happy with earning eight nine hundred quid a week or maybe a grand a week and just smashing his fucking two hundred quid a day and getting off at two o'clock when he gets fast enough, there's no reason in this climate you can. You know, and you can't do that. You, there's no reason you can't do that. But I said to him, I'll set him a gang up in years to come if he wants to start earning more than I'll pay him on a day work rate. So say, say he's a year, in, he's two years into lane bricks. So full on improver, you know, sort of learning to, for instance, he's building freehand, he's, got, he's, he's going in for his blue card, that's say a year from now. And I'm paying him, say, I don't know, what's an improver's rate? 160 a day, something like that, on the regular. Um, you know, maybe 150, depending. Depending what I pay, I've paid him that now as a labourer, but he will not be labouring as much, that's the point. So, that's when we'll start, obviously, bringing someone else into the gang, another labourer, another apprentice, to pick up the slack of labouring. He'll have to start putting towards their wages, in a sense, but basically, at the end of the day, he'll just be on a day work rate. Labour would be on a day work rate. That's like the, that's the due, that's the time that's the smallest gang size. That's the start of start up to getting a big gang. That'll be stressful enough for me at that size. That'll be stressful enough. But realistically, this is gonna be me and Dean for now, and he's gonna be periodically labouring, periodically walling. You know, I'm not gonna have, especially with these Connie bricks. I'm not going to be fucking churning out the same work you can on clay. You don't need the same level of tender. You need more organisation. And that's what I'm getting Dean doing. Building corners, beam filling. There's loads of things I'm doing with him off camera that you don't see. Um, you know, um, I just want to talk to you guys about it as well because there's just not no one out there. There's no one out there actually wanting to help, help apprentices, help young guys. That, like, there's... There's, there's been events out there that are set up to help the careers of the young, the youth, but it's just to promote their own shit, really. You know, at the end of the day, I don't see anyone out there actually talking to the youngsters and giving them the info. You know, I've I've talked to a couple of apprentices when I was on a red road job, probably close to a year ago now, maybe longer, and I said, if you need any, if you ever want to go on your own, a bit like what I was doing at the time because I was solo, didn't have a, my gang want what it should have been. I was just so well, sometimes with my dad. I was doing a lot of garages, not a few fourth lifts, fucking loads of shit lifts, little, little shit lifts and stuff. A lot of garages, loads of fucking little walls, dropped on some footings because they needed a building. Just shit like that, you know. If you ever get to the point as a as you when you're out of your time, three, four years, you know, give me a private message or I said I said this to them, I said this to guys online, give me a private message, I'll give you a template of me booking in, how I book in. That's one thing I'm going to be doing in future videos. I'm just figuring out a way to do it in the best way. I'm going to get a whiteboard. I'm going to get a whiteboard and do it all by hand, I think. And sit and stand in front of the whiteboard after booking. 
I'm going to give you a template of, I, of, of how I book in, how to write a proper invoice. Um, guys, I don't know, the, the industry don't want you to know this because what I'm going to be showing you in videos, what I'm going to be showing you in videos, how to write a fucking invoice, people should be paying for. Do you get what I mean? And the info, it's like guys will fucking, <laughs> the guys will pay, send, you know, make courses up online for this shit. But I'll do a little water of how I do invoices and everything. How I because end of day I'm here to fucking with this channel you know on YouTube. I want to fucking help people. That's how I am. You know anyone knows me personally. I'll fucking do help for anyone. But I'm gonna. I'm just been why everyone's. I've had been asked loads of times. How do you book it? How do you do this? And end of day, maybe even fucking out of a thousand or two thousand, say two thousand people watch that video. Fucking probably only ten of them will take note of what it is. You know what I mean? A lot of people just fucking buy it off and go, that's a little shit. Or whatever. And don't do that. But I'm going to show so much stuff in the coming videos. So it is a bit of footage of me training. Um, this video will say Brit Lane vlog. <laughs> Brit Lane slash training vlog because I've talked about both shit in a sense. Yeah, there's so much shit. I, there's so much stuff I want to talk about on the channel which guys aren't which channels aren't talking about you know there's I don't know people just use YouTube now as an advertisement for the business so or they use Instagram like oh get in touch with me I'll build you this fucking house look how fucking good it is but is that is that helping youngsters is that helping youngsters you promoting your business it didn't at the end of the day I want to see the, I'd say the only person who's put the most effort into helping youngsters out there is probably Charlie Collison the man the man you know I come back to I come back to him all the time. I, I circle round, I circle round all the content that's out there. And the the biggest thing of the big, I always come back to the same thing. Where the fuck did I get this idea from? Where did I get this idea? Oh, who did it first? Charlie Collison. You're on a site, um, building houses for I've got his front name of him, Blue Crest Nicholson, Crest Nicholson. That's it. Down south, I've never heard of them up here, north, but we were building on a site, we had two apprentices and we were teaching them, teaching them stuff, and Harry was one of them, Harry's gone obviously, a big Harry, um, he didn't work, I don't think he worked, or he didn't work with me, or he, he's planning on coming back at some point, I don't know, I've not, I don't care, he hasn't made videos in ages, but that's the closest I saw. Now someone helping apprentice, someone helping them, bringing someone on from brand new to actually laying bricks to a line. I've been, I've done it with like four, four or five people over the years. Four people. I had one lad. I taught a lot to Gav, Nobed, fucking bad experience there. That put me off helping anyone. I've had our lass, Dean, and I didn't really. I, I taught me dad a few things, but he won't listen. I had someone else. I had a couple. I had a couple of the lads. A couple of the lads I knew, and I've helped. I've helped. You know, I've taught probably like you know three apprentices over me year. Over me, you know, nine year on a building site, twelve year learning to bricklay. So is it nine year? Yeah, it'd be nine year. Nine year on building sites. Nine year on building. I've, I've taught three people. I've taught them stuff that matters. Like Dean, I've brought him on. You know, I've taught taught Dean the right way as well. That's one thing people don't, uh, you know, they don't teach people the right way. It mean how you taught is how you become a bricklayer. I've had to learn shitloads on my own. You know, I got taught loads of different methods from old bricklayers when I started, but I've learned it all myself a lot of it. I've changed my ways, and I'm completely different to when I first started. So, um, yeah. That's all that. Yeah. Anyway, I've got a lot of content coming, and hopefully you guys listening and just enjoy. I know I'm ranting. I know I'm talking. I'll get a comment. Oh, there's no brick lane footage in this video. Why is it so brick lane vlog? Because I'm talking about it, and it's a vlog. It's a video vlog. And fucking end of day, there's no one sat on camera telling you about this stuff because they probably don't want you to know, or they haven't thought about it, or you know. Anyway. Uh, there'll be a lot of guys, all the guys don't agree with what I'm saying, but I'm new school, new school. Anyway, 
Uh, check out the footage, Epidemic Sound for the music. Check it out, they have some good shit. Um, I'm going to play some Division. I've done my training, I'm sweaty. I'm going to put some spray on, have a coffee, and uh, get to gaming. Right, Let's see you in the next, uh, see you in the next clip. So yeah, hope you enjoyed. Um, follow me on Instagram. I've been starting putting the little fucking tags and shit. Looks like a proper YouTuber and shit. I've started putting... I'm really... I used to use Sony Vegas. I used to use a lot of editing software on my PC. I used to do like keyframe shit, move shit around. I used to like make intros and stuff on After Effects and Sony Vegas. I used to be really a fucking massive nerd into all this, but... With life and me growing older, I've got out of it. But I'm still I'm using for anyone um, who's enjoyed the video and anyone who cares. I'm using an app called Power Direct uh, Power Director on my Android device. I've got a laptop. I've got everything I need to edit on a laptop. But I've just not been doing it. Um, I haven't. At the, <laughs> my son at the moment um, he's into everything. He's into everything. He we have to. Check. We've changed the whole way out of his house because of oh, my son. Um, the way he is, you know. And I ain't got. I can't leave a laptop around, or I'll get smashed up. He wrecks everything. All his toys, he wrecks everything. So I, when I get, um, I've been rearranging the house. I've had, a, I've had loads of shit happen in the house. 
I fucking flooded it <laughs> before I fucking know if you guys keep up with the channel you've seen I've done shit loads of stuff um, but I don't film in my house you know it's my area you know it's my fucking it's my lively it's my life in, you know I don't put everything on YouTube you know what I mean I, you might think me talking to the camera sat on my settee which it looks fucked now it looks fucked but it's comfy as fuck I've done it so many times but when I get a desk set up I'll go through my editing process for the videos, I'll show guys how I edit this footage and, you know, I want to do just more than bricklaying as well, you know. I'm always going to be a bricklayer, probably going to bricklay till the day I die. Um, <laughs> hopefully I'll retire, hopefully I'll not put my tools in bucket and croak it, you know, but <clears throat> I want to do other things as well on the channel, you know. It's going to be, it's going to be basically all bricklaying, but I want to... You know, I want people to subscribe to me, not just what I do on a building site. You know, at the end of the day, I want guys who don't even aren't even bricklayers to just watch me and say, "Oh, it's oh, it's cool. He does this, this, and that." I want to, at some point, get into doing more than bricklaying. I've been asked, I've been asked before, what do you plan on doing in the future? I just plan on, I do plan on working on building sites for the foreseeable few years, at least. And then I want to take on some private builds, but um, I want them to be new builds. I don't want, I'm not into, I love looking at new houses, I'm into new houses. I, I like I like some of these expensive, if you saw that video I was doing, that garage with a black motor, that site had some modern looking timber frame houses, and they look mint. I love new, I'm passionate about stuff looking new, modern, I'm passionate about the modern look. I'm not so into the old heritage shit, you know what I mean? I know a lot of guys who love old brickwork. I can look at it. I love. I appreciate the old, the old ways, the traditional ways. I appreciate it. Right? I could go and look at stuff and it would fascinate me. But on my channel, I'm into building new things. Like I'm into building things that are new, and I'd love to take on my own new build. So, like in the future, if I could even get. Um, to work for a developer in a sense and just w just build a, new, a pair of houses for instance just like a pair of houses two detached or something like that on a site on my own on a little small little site on my own and just do it for like a, do it for a uh, you know just get in touch with a developer and just just you know send my contract out I'd have to be in my own firm then but this I'm talking down the line years to come uh, when I'm a bit more management savvy, do you know, there's a lot to be said for management, do you know what I mean? A lot of people, a lot of bricklayers will slag man management off, you know, site managers or site agents, it's a fucking skill in itself, I can't, you know, people may not agree with the way people manage things, but I'm not going to fucking do it, I can't fucking, I don't want that stress, I don't want to have to fucking remember shit, because fucking if I tried to do any of that I'd forget I forget putting loads of shit in on houses just building the fucking house never mind ordering materials and all the shit that site agents do and managers do fuck, fuck mate fuck that I don't want to I don't want any, any part of that you know what I mean I that's why a site manager and a site assistant or you know whatever a contracts manager does what they do they do what they do there it's, it's, it's an old it's a whole world of the construction industry outside of just what I do, Britley, you know, you know, fuck me, there is some respect for that, you know what I mean, there's, you know, I have respect for people who can manage that, because that's, stress levels beyond what I'm capable of, and beyond what a lot of you guys watching who are Britley is are capable of, there's guys who have their own businesses, there's guys who have, you know, even guys with small businesses, small, small even like what Steve and Alex do, they're like a, two of them, the there's the father and the son, Steve and Alex, they go out doing private builds. That is stressful enough. That it will be that will have a stress level a lot higher than what I do. But there's stuff I do that people don't want to do. Like no one wants to fucking tear ass around building sites, chasing forty drivers down, grabbing window formers, lintels, this, that, that, another sundries, this, this and that, and then fucking put an house up at breakneck speed. People don't want to do that either. You know, and then rely on actually paying a labourer, say like Dean, top money, paying Dean minimum 120, you know, upwards of, uh, you know, 150 a day, that's like top money, 150, 160 is top labour money, um, but he's just not, he's just not labour, he's not just a labourer, he's doing other shit, but people don't want to do what I'm doing either, so, 
everyone has their own fucking every job has their own has its own stress levels but when I do finally back to my original point when I do finally get me office set up in the I'm gonna put a partition wall in one of the big bedrooms and have an office and have another little baby room sort of I don't know we don't know what we're gonna do with that one I'm gonna put a partition in uh, I'm gonna put it on YouTube I can make a stud wall fuck me have you seen that fucking <laughs> all you need is a fucking framing nailer and you, you're away we will put a stud wall up, I'm going to make an office, I think. Anyway, I'm going to have an office somewhere in my house. I'm going to do some videos out of there, and that's going to, I'm going to have like a little fucking whiteboard and shit, and I'm going to actually do my best neat handwriting. Anyone who sees me do a signing sheet thinks I'm fucking special, but I'm not. I can actually write neat. I'm going to do all that and do some invoice videos and shit like that and how, how I go about doing an invoice just for just for on site, you know, not an invoice for pricing your own job, I don't know shit like that yet, but I'll learn eventually and there is apps out there, there's loads of shit out there that can help you, so, anyway guys, hope you like this brick lane training combo, training vlog combo, it'll only get probably less than a thousand views I reckon, I bet 500 people will watch it, but you guys, 500, you 500 people who've watched this, I hope you enjoyed and I'll be doing more of these sort of talky videos. So uh, stay tuned. See you in the next one.